I'm here doing an all day maintenance and kill power. And one of the things I ran into was right here, this contactor starting to burn up on the contact points. See the bottom here, you got some burning happening. Then this middle one, and a very little there. So we're gonna replace this contactor today before it causes any problems. Because as these contact points start to wear, it's gonna raise the amperage a little and make it run a little hotter. It's just not good for the system. So before we do anything, we're gonna check for power just to make sure that there's no voltage present here. Because even though I killed the disconnect, you can't always trust the disconnect. Nothing to ground. We're together, so. We know that we don't have any power. So now let's unwire the contactor. could come off also. I'm not sure why the manufacturer always tries to defy gravity, but they do. And the only downfall to me fighting how they installed it initially, which I wish I could, flip the contactor I have, flip the contactor I have just won't well maybe let's see here's the one they have and as you can see the contact points like they had it, low voltage is here. That lug's not in use, this one was. This one was, this one was. I always like to at least crack them before I put them in. Put Phillips. Uh, mount it. See, now this is where the problem comes in. I can get it pretty tight. Stuff. So the blues we're hitting, there's one more, there was three of them I pulled off. Where is this one? Okay. Now these, blue and red. Now you have two ways of making this connection. One, we can just cut that off, or two, we can crush it in a little. And connect it right in. Let's open these up now. I 
I've been doing this for almost 20 years like this, and I never have any problems. You can snip them off. I'll do the bottoms of cutting them off either way. You're getting solid connections. Like if you wanted to, you could just come up to them, flip them off, put the low voltage on in the back. Nice tight fit, always make sure it's a tight fit, because if not, it could fall off. Nice tight fit, this black one here. All right, so those go back on like that. Let's open these. That one, blue there. I mean, you could also cut that off and just go bare wire in, but what's the point? But I'm gonna say I like the other way, not this way, for one main reason. Look at how much further the lug sunk in here than here because the fat part takes up a lot of space. So just make sure you snug these down. Don't kill them because I have cracked them tight. Tight. we don't need those loose all right so now let me bring this behind these wires it'll just look better it's more of an appearance thing than anything at this point so we had three wires on top it's a little loose so I'm gonna take needle nose if it's too loose replace if it's just a little just squeeze it in just a little not much just a little Okay, now what I was going to do is take it, twist it, and face it in. That's a lot better. So let's test the brand new contactor. Everything is nice and tight. Turn the unit on. Bands on. These are clean connections, they may not read. Let me clean that up a little, let's see. If you hold these, you're supposed to be able to just cycle through everything and you could even put a resistor on and go right to what you want to bring on rough up the screw connection on the inside a little let's get my jumper wire out I've noticed that if these are not clean, they may not cycle through the test. Be nice if they do, but. Second contactor works. Here goes the heat. See, I just had to clean it up a little and get a good contact on it. There goes the heat. We're gonna go boom. Water may squirt out, it may not. But I mean, I'm only testing that, but.
It's on. Yep, very quiet. Heat too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of me replacing a contactor. Till next time, I'm out.